Hi folks, it's time for me to start planning my last Navex of all time, hopefully uh, before I get my recreational pilot's license. So I thought I'd take you through the process. This is not training, just entertainment. So here's the form that I use these days. Now I've gone through very different, many different variations of this. Some of them much more complicated. Your instructor might insist that you use one that shows a lot more working this. This one I like because it fits on a knee pad. It's a little bit tight for some information, but it works. So our call sign is TKY. Our type is a PA38. A SAR time we'll do later. Estimate time of departure is 9.15, but we can change that later. Forecasts we've looked at, but we'll look at them again before we leave. Uh, and our positions now, I need to get those out of URSA. So here in Australia, we use the en route supplement Australia and in the back of it here there are all kinds of waypoints um, recorded for those are IFR ones there but there are VFR ones as well in URSA now get yourself an up-to-date URSA from your club or your instructor or whomever and get those points recorded I'm just going to copy them off a previous flight plan just to save you a bit of time with me doing all of this stuff so our first one is our takeoff point, which is Maitland. We don't want to record any information in that first line. Our next one is Hexham Bridge, which is HXB. The following one is Williamtown YWLM. We hope we'll get clearance for that. And then Broughton Island BRI and Sugarloaf Point SUG. Then the hospital at Foster YXFS and then Port Macquarie YPMQ. Okay, so that's all of our codes. As I said, you'll get them out of URSA here in Australia. I don't know where you get them from in the US. You'll have to tell me in the comments below. Uh, if you're not using an uh, electronic flight bag, that is. So then we've got to write down our altitudes. Now what I've been taught to do is look at the chart, work out your minimum safes. Now your instructor will show you how to do that. We're flying along the coast. It's pretty much none of that to worry about. We're going to, or I'm going to just put in here what I think is going to be appropriate. Okay, so let's start with our first leg to Hexham Bridge which is going to be 1500 feet, I would suggest. They're probably going to have us at 500 feet as we transit to Broughton Island, as that's in the procedures in URSA. Sugarloaf Point, Broughton Island Sugarloaf Point, we're going to be able to climb. I'm going to put 3500 because we're going to be flying to the north, slightly east of north, but the next leg we're flying slightly east of north. So we're going to put that down as 4500 feet and then Port Macquarie back to 3,500 feet until we make our descent to land. So the next column here is our true airspeeds. I'm going to put them down for the first leg as 80, and then from then on, 95. We're in a Piper Tomahawk. We're not going to go anywhere very fast. So now we need to find our tracks, and you notice here it's in magnetic. Now, I always used to do it in true, and you'll find out why later. But let's do it in magnetic. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find our star point and our first leg to Hexham Bridge. I usually extend the lines, in this case west of where I'm starting from, so that I can get a better reading out of my protractor. Now this protractor I've had for 25 years, when I first thought I would become a pilot, and I'm going to put it on the extended line of that track, lined up with the grids on the map, correct way around, with the center point over my track and then I can read my track here which is 116 so this though 116 is off a chart and charts are true we need magnetic so if we look at the top of this chart you can see a purple line here with magnetic variation of 12 degrees east and over here on the coast it's 12 and a half I'm working with 12 much easier and we don't need to be that precise anyway. So our 116 has to be corrected for that magnetic variation. East is least so we subtract. 116 less 12 is 104. 
So then we just continue on with the rest of our legs. In this case, we're going to do hex and bridge to um, Williamtown. And that comes out. Oh, it would help if we put the protractor the right way around, wouldn't it? It comes out at 96. So 96 less 12 is 82, right? 84, correction. So 084. Right, and that's probably why your instructor wants to see you do it as two different numbers so you can check that your work. I'm doing it in my head and that is potential for making mistakes. So you're gonna protract the right way around. I'm gonna put it down where we can line it up on the grid of the map first, then onto the track. Oop. Make sure I'm in the right spot. A bit hard to do because I'm trying to get you to be able to see and me to be able to see. And what we end up with there is 068. No, 064, correction. Let me do that again. Come over here. Zero six six, in fact. So zero six six less twelve becomes zero five four. Now to Sugarloaf Point, so zero five four. Now to Sugarloaf Point, from Broughton Island to Sugarloaf Point, we're going to be. Try and get that lined up as best I can. And the track will be. Ah, put your protractor the right way around, Kimberly. The track will be 050. So we'll write 050 into here. Only, sorry, we're going to correct it for 12, don't we? So 0, 5, 0, less 12, 0, 3, 8. And then we're going to go Sugar Life Point to Foster Hospital. So let's do that with our protractor the right way around this time. And we get 354. So let's put zero, oh sorry, three, five, four. Then our last leg up to Port, <coughs> excuse me, Port Macquarie. Is zero, two, three. Corrected for magnetic is zero, one, one. So there you go, we've got our tracks recorded now. In, uh, in magnetic. And now the wind is forecast to be uh, 0, 0.5 knots at 320 degrees. So we, I would normally not do a wind correction for that because it's going to be so small for most of these really short legs. But let's go ahead and do it. So what you need for that is your E6B uh, and you need the reverse side of it for the wind calculations. The first step for this one, now read the instructions for your own, this is not instruction, but for mine the first step is to set our wind direction, which is 320. So we're going to set it to the true index up here. Wind direction of 320, and then we're going to mark with pencil five knots, which is each of these um, graduations is two knots. So two, four, six, 
up from the center point, we're going to be 2, 2, 5, 2, 4, 5, sorry. So we're going to put a pencil mark at 5 knots. And that's how we set the wind, 3, 2, 0 at 5 knots. Then we've got to use our, our track, but in true, because the wind is true, not magnetic. So we've got to back calculate again, and that's why I will typically record this, cross out the M, put a T, record those in true, and only put my headings in magnetic. That's my preference, but for this example, I haven't done that. So let's go back ahead, uh, back where we were, I mean, and back calculate to our trues. 104 plus 12 is 116, and you might remember that is correct. So 116 degrees that we need to set on here. 116 is our true heading for our first leg, and our first leg we're flying at 80 knots true airspeed. We need to work out what our ground speed is and what our actual heading will be, because we've got to allow for the wind to make us drift. So our true gr our ground speed is calculated in this way. We put the, the track in true up there, 116. We slide the pencil mark to our true airspeed. For the first leg, that's 80 knots. All right, so our pencil mark is on 80 knots. And then we can read our ground speed under the rivet. So under the rivet is actually 8245. So we will record our ground speed as 85 knots. And our heading is indicated by where the pencil dot ends up. In this case, the pencil dot is left of track, which makes sense, right? The wind is coming from the northwest. So we will need to point slightly towards the northwest. So we need to deduct in this case one degree from our track because those graduations are two degrees and we're in between zero and the first one so one degree is left of track would be achieved by flying instead of zero eight four we would have to sorry correction instead of one zero four we would fly one zero two one zero three sorry jumping ahead of myself there one zero three which is one degree less so let's do the next one now. Our track is 084 magnetic, which is 096 true. So we're going to set 096. So there's 90, there's 96. And we slide the pencil to the, our true airspeed, which is for this leg will be 95 knots. So up we come to the 95. And that then gives us our ground speed under the rivet and a direction to fly or a heading under the or heading correction under the pencil there. So our ground speed will be 99 knots and our heading will be two degrees less than our track. So our track is 084, which means our heading will be 082. And we just continue on through. Let's do another one. We're going to be 054 magnetic for our next track, which is 066 true. So we're going to set 066 on here. We're going to move the pencil mark to 95 knots. And then we can read our ground speed as 24696 knots. And our heading is going to be three degrees less than our track, which is 051. All right, and the next leg, 038 true, which is 050. Oh, so 038 magnetic is 050 true. 050 true. We set that at the index. We then move the pencil line to 95 knots, close as we can get it. You can see that 
rivet is actually beside the pencil line so our ground speed is going to be 95 but we're going to be flying three degrees left of the track which is 038 becomes 035 next one 354 degrees magnetic becomes 366 just double check that yep 366 so we come around a 360 and 366 so 366 that, that number doesn't seem right to me 354 true No, it's not true. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. So, uh, 366, slide the pencil to 95. No, that isn't. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Double checking. All right, slide the pencil to 95 knots, and that shows us we're going to be doing 91 knots ground speed. We're going to be 2 degrees left of track, which is 352. Okay, then we're going to be... Uh, the last leg, we're going to be 011 plus 12023. So 023 on the index here. Slide the pencil dot to 95 knots, and then we end up with a ground speed of 92, and we are three degrees left of track, which is 11 becomes 8008. So there you go, we've got our positions, our altitudes, our true air speeds, our track in magnetic, our wind, our heading, which is our track corrected for wind. And our ground speed, which is our true airspeed, corrected for wind. With the uh, addition of distances, we can determine how many minutes between each of those positions. So what we do is we take our rule, and this one's calibrated for visual terminal charts, not visual navigation charts. So the scale means that I have to double whatever whatever I measure here. So when I measure Maitland to Hexham Bridge, I get 5, so that becomes 10. And I'm not going to go and show you me measuring them all. I'm sure you know how to measure. I'm going to copy them off another plan that I have here. So we have 10, then our next leg to Williamtown is 8, then our next leg to Broughton Island is 27, then 16, then 15, then 48. So our estimated time intervals are what we have to work out now. And we do that using this side of our E6B computer. Yours might be slightly different, but for mine, what I do is I take my ground speed and my distance and use those to calculate my interval. So ground speed, we set our ground speed under the index mark here, so the 60. Our ground speed for the first leg is 85. So let's set it. There it is, 85. Right there. So that outside ring set against that index is 85. And then we look at the distance, which is 10 nautical miles. We take that on the outside here. So 10 is just over 7 minutes, which I know to be true. I'm going to round it up to 8. Okay, now... That's probably that's because I'm going to be climbing and I'm probably going a bit slower than that. Now, um, <coughs> now the next leg we're going 99 ground speed, and we've got to go eight eight nautical miles. So 99 ground speed we set under the index here. There it is, and we're going to go eight nautical miles, which is over here. That's about five minutes, a little bit less than five. Let's make it five. The next leg is 96 knots ground speed, so we set the index at 96. And we're going to go 27. 27 is around here. 
So six, seven, correction, it's around here. 27, six, seven is about 17 minutes. Okay, now we've got to get uh, our next one, which is 95 knots ground speed, one knot less, 15 nautical miles, which is nine and a half minutes. All right, so let's make it 10, shall we? Then we're going to be doing 91 knots. And we're going to get a 15. That's also 10 minutes. Then we're going 92 knots. 48 nautical miles, which is way around this side here. Just make sure I don't lose the index. 48 is there. That's 31, 32 for 49. I'm going to make it 32 anyway. 32 minutes. So there you go, we've got now ground speeds, distances, and elapsed time interval. Or estimated time interval, whichever you want to call it. So each of those is the intervals between each of the positions. Now let's sum them up as we go, like a rolling sum. So we've got, you know, eight minutes to get to our first point, then eight plus five to get to our next point, which is 13 then 13 plus 17 to get to our next turn point which is 30 30 plus 10 is 40 40 plus 10 is 50 50 plus 32 is 82 so it's an 82 minute flight okay so one hour 22 minutes now we can put our times in here but we'll wait till later and then we can track them through our flight throughout our flight all right but the main point is we now know it's going to be an 82 minute flight so that allows us to plan our fuel. Now with me and an instructor in a little PA38, we're not going to be carrying full fuel. We're going to be carrying 32 litres in each tank, which is 83 minutes in each tank. Now I've just recorded it on this, which is CASA's time in tanks uh, chart, which I love, uh, as 80 minutes. I use 11 litres every 30 minutes or 22 litres per hour in cruise for planning purposes. I actually lose it. I use 19, but I plan it at 22. So how are we going to calculate that? Well, you can do it by a calculator, but the E6B is really convenient. So let's do that. As I said, our fuel usage is going to be in cruise 22 litres per hour for planning purposes. So we first of all going to allow for taxi, which at Maitland is not very long. I'm going to call it four litres. It won't be that, but let's call it four. Our trip is 82 minutes, so let's record that in the minutes column here. Then we're going to work out what that means in litres. But first of all, let's finish the rest of the column off. Variable reserve we won't use. Alternate, no. If we need an alternate, we're not flying. It's a training flight. Fixed reserve is 45 minutes, holding is nothing. And what we're going to have there now is a total here. So 82 plus 45, we've got to add those two up. Two and five is seven, four and eight is 12, 127 minutes. So two hours and seven minutes fuel required. Okay, so now we'll do that in liters. We've got for the, for the trip 82 minutes, what is that in litres at 22 litres per hour? Again, we use the E6B, we spin the index around to 22, that's our fuel burn. We then look on the inside here for 82 minutes. There it is there, corresponding 82 minutes, corresponding to 32 litres, oh, sorry, 30 litres. So we're going to record our fuel usage as 30 litres for the cruise portion. No variable, no alternate, 45 fixed reserve. Now I calculate my reserve not at 22, but at 25 uh, litres per hour. 25 litres per hour for 45 minutes should be about three quarters of 22, right? So, uh, of 25, I mean. So 25 litres per hour, set on the index here, for 45 minutes, so let's come back to 45, here it is here, and it's near enough to 19 litres. 
And I happen to know from experience that that is correct. I've used it many times. So I always fly with 45 minutes reserve. So now what do we need in litres? We need 34 plus 19, which is 53. So we need 53 litres. Now we can truth check that. 127, let's calculate it at 25 litres. So we set our index to 25 litres per hour. Now we need to, look, need to look for 127 minutes. So 127 is about two hours and seven, right? So 127 is here, which corresponds to about, look, 53 litres. So good, we've sense checked it. We know we're right. Now with me and instructor, as I said, we're gonna be 32 litres per tank. That's 64 litres of fuel. So 64 litres of fuel, we need to now know what is our margin above these. We've got 45 minutes reserve required. So this is our required fuel. If we carry 64, how much margin do we have? Okay, so our margin is the difference between 64 and 53. Okay, so 54 and 64 would be 10, right? So we're 11 litres. 11 litres of margin. What is that in minutes? So we use 22 on cruise, but we calculate at 25 for our reserves and our margins. But we know it's going to be somewhere less than half an hour. So, because 11 minutes is half of 22, 11 minutes is less than half of 25. So let's work it out. 60 index set to 25, so in other words, using 25 litres per 60 minutes. And we are carrying, we, we've got extra 11 litres. So let's take our litres and work out what that means in time. So 11 is here. There it is there, look, 25, 26, we're going to call it 26 minutes. So in addition to our 45 fixed reserve, we've got 26 minutes of extra margin. That makes our endurance the sum of those two, 127 and 26. Okay, so 7 and 6 is 3, or 13 actually, and 3 and 2 is 5. 153 minutes, just short of three hours, seven minutes short of three hours. So 153 minutes is our endurance. All right, and our liters is 64. So now let's just back calculate that at, at 25 instead of at 22. So 25, just as a sense check, 25 liters per hour, 64 liters total, 25 liters per hour, 64 litres total, 1, 2, 3, 4, is 150. 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's 2, 4, 154 minutes. So you can see, we've sense checked it, it all makes sense, uh, it's viable. So now, next is all the comms stuff and other things, pilot notes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my wind down here, 05 at 320, right? And then I'm going to put some other remarks down here. In particular, I'm going to record um, the Port Macquarie runway directions. So YPMQ runway directions. So we'll go to Ursa here. We'll find Port Macquarie. Peterborough. Port Macquarie. So here's Port Macquarie. Runway directions are 0321, 1800 meters long. 
uh, runway 0321 1800 meters and elevation of 15 feet good I would read all through all the information here the main thing I want first of all is the AWIS or ATIS so AWIS is recorded here the frequency so YPMQ I'm going to record in my book in my plan here YPMQ ATIS or AWIS actually is 128.45 good notice there's a lot of notes in here about approach obstacles trees in particular the other thing I need is the radio details all right so I could put an NDB in if I was going to use it but I'm not I'm going to use a GNSS and dead reckoning so my CTAF I need to report that record that so 118.1 so let's go down here YPMQ 118.1 is our CTAF then our center frequencies we need them as well so we can find that in here but I'm going to look on the chart let me just put that aside for a minute show you on the chart here's a Port Macquarie region up here and there's our center frequency 12055 so let's go 12055 now YMND where we're departing from is my home airport 12265 for comms and the center frequency is on the chart as well it's 125 decimal 7 so 125 decimal 7 we have a look do we need any other center frequencies no we don't looking at the chart so now what we need is Williamtown now that's military airport so YWLM in fact I'm going to write it as they put it in Ursa because it's military and they use for almost like a nickname it's called Willie and we need to talk to Willie departures now I know that because I've read the Ursa um, instructions relating to Williamtown so let's find Williamtown so I can show you Williamtown whole bunch of information here to read tons and tons of information the most important bit I guess is all the local all the um, flight procedures coastal route and others so I know from reading all of that that I need to talk to Willie Departures and so here are the frequencies here Willie Departure is 13035 so I'm going to write that down in here 13035 but I'm also going to write the approach just in case well the approach is 135.7 so one three five decimal seven okay now in terms of procedures sometimes I'll write notes to myself here about procedures so we will go report five nautical miles from I'll say before Uh, Hexham Bridge okay to Willy departure expect 500 feet all right and then we can record also report Broughton Island Willy departure okay and then I'll clear us to do whatever so there you go there is my plan done for my very next navigation exercise and we'll go and we'll check all the NOTAMs and other things one thing I do need to know about is
the fuel situation which I have to contact the guy about because we will be requiring fuel so I'm going to put his phone number here on the plan when I pull it off the NOTAM because there's an issue with fuel there at the moment we have to pre-order it which I'll do first thing in the morning or maybe even okay so here's my electronic flight bag I actually have three of them this one's an iPad but I also have Android tablets now I have four flight and I really like the interface for four flight and it's probably what I would choose to use except it lacks a couple of things you can't do different heights for each leg which is I think a very basic requirement and should be part of the basic plan but it's not you have to pay for an extra so sorry about that for flight Boeing you need to sort that out our plan EFB is my preferred rather than Oz runways and I'll show you why all my flight plans are in the cloud if I click on that flight plan which we've just looked at you can see all of the information there about that flight plan and you can see the military airspace that will be flying through etc so now if I need to go to coastal route I've actually got it in here if I fly directly over Williamtown I've got that on paper so that's how I will choose to do this so the trip up is just as I've recorded except for the coastal bit and what I like about Avplan EFB is this plan look at that that's great I can put individual heights in and I can do all kinds of things that I can't do in full flight unfortunately leg is uh, 84 minutes and I've calculated it at 82 uh, so our estimated time of arrival is 1400 UTC but what departure time is that I need to check that anywho um, 132 nautical miles 40 liters of fuel I calculated we need um, what did I say 50 something 53 so we're looking pretty good there as I say what I like is being able to put in these individual heights and we can do a whole bunch of other stuff as well so that's my preferred way of doing it that's the full screen there I'll also have to enter this into the um, um, Garmin which I think I've already done and I've also got obviously the return route here which is interesting as well so we'll be coming back to Tari then across the hill through a valley and through this corridor here which is to keep us out of the military airspace we've got to stay within two nautical miles of that railway line while we're going through that corridor and within one nautical mile of the railway line when we're in this corridor here at 1600 feet so we won't be flying direct or straight like that we're actually following the railway line so that's going to be a very interesting navigation exercise to fly and I'm really looking forward to it if you're looking forward to it too make sure you subscribe make sure you hit the bell notification so you're aware of new episodes give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time in the cockpit bye for now